Let's get into these Mars, Venus, and Juno. I'm going to do an introduction because I usually don't um, do an introduction for the planets, but people ask me, I, I see your comments, I see what you're asking me for, um, just to let you guys know that I use like my oracle energies when I do this and it's draining. That's why I, I, I just don't churn, just be churning and churning out content all the time. Um, I need time to rejuvenate after I do all this reading, okay? I'm actually reading the energies of these planets and I'm reading humans as well and how, because I, I can see the actual life of the energy. All right. Mars, introduction. It says my phone is hot and the video quality might be affected. Oh, uh, dang it. <laughs> I hope not. Okay. Mars, what's Mars about? Well, Mars, it will be your assertive energy in your chart. Um, Mars is ruled by the first house, it's ruled by Aries, um, is associated also with Scorpio energy. I don't know why Scorpio has to take up two planets, but she's special in that way. I don't honestly consider Scorpio to be a water sign, it's a metal sign to me. <laughs> That's just how I read, read the energy, it's a metal sign. Um... All right, so Mars energy will where you will um, where we will see how you take the lead, uh, like kind of like athletic energy um, in women. This could be uh, tomboy energy depending upon the, the placement. Uh, this is where you're argumentative and you kind of like stand up for yourself. This is where people might consider your selfishness, but I feel like selfishness. Is healthy everybody needs a healthy dose of selfishness so you will look to like where you have Aries where you have Mars energy um, to see like where your that part of your personality comes out because Mars actually does rule your personality your inner animation your instinctual energy coming out the the inner toddler where you're like this is mine this is your boundaries your personality actually is is how people know where your boundaries lie. If you're always hiding yourself and your personality, aren't you constantly? Don't you all constantly feel like, a nobody knows me, and b everybody's always breaking my boundaries? You have to stand up for yourself, okay? So your Mars energy uh, is where you will see how you do that, how you go about that. Everybody goes about that in a different way and we're talking about that through the houses now if mars is debilitated or afflicted in any way then you might be a slow to do that you might think like say you have mars and connected to virgo or the sixth house you might think about it more than you take action and that's not necessarily like the best thing for mars energy um mars would be how you put yourself first um, your most use your your most useful energy, uh, but it's instinctual. Like I was saying be before, so if it's broken, you may not be able to connect your lower self with your higher self. So you might do things um, impulsively, and it might not connect with who you really are. So you would need to maybe have some healing, some trauma healing to connect your lower self and your higher self to see kind of like why you, cause your Mars can sometimes go into your subconscious mind. Like if it's connected to the 12th house or Pisces where you're, where you're mo, you don't understand your motives for things. You don't understand like, like how did I end up here? Why does, why, this does not make sense. And Mars is sexual attraction, sexual energy, 
um, uh, which is also very spiritual energy, but it's like how you like to get down, you know, <laughs> like how you, how you do your thing. So I, I consider Mars to be very, um, important in your chart. Uh, Mars is how you do everything kind of, you know, like how, how do you do your thing? It's your thing, you know, are, do, are you looking to other people to see how you should do things? Or are you like really trusting your inner instincts? You know, uh, Mars can be useful for, for the sixth house energy, for your eighth house energy, for your 10th house energy, like how you get it, get the job done, you know, um, how you use your personality outwardly in life. Um, let's see. Oh, it's, it also is connected to what type of exercises you like to do. Say, for instance, if you have Mars connected to Leo, then you uh, would be great at, like, Zumba. You would have so much fun doing Zumba. Or if you have, like, Mars, I'll use Virgo again, then you probably like to go on slow walks through nature or something like that. Or you might, like, um, yoga. Be All right, my phone cut off because it's overheating. I'm gonna, I want a new phone. <laughs> I'm tired of that. Um, so yeah, so the Mars energy, it's like your fiery passion energy. It's your spiritual connection through your body. It's, it's how you uh, take action. And a lot of times this is a part of us that gets beat down because in, um, especially I guess it's this is happening everywhere now to where you have to you're supposed to fit into society so your individuality is kind of beaten out of you either by uh through the hands of your parents through the hands of society um uh, through people telling you that if you're not built a certain way talk a certain way look a certain way then you're not going to be liked loved or paid attention to Unfortunately, this does happen to some people. Uh, but Mars energy is actually where you can resource your bravery and your courage to, to enough to be yourself anyway. The truth about energy is that if you move it, you know, there's something that's going to come back to you. You know, and, and, and then if you have a great attitude along with it, and you think positive along with your action and your movement, you know, and also you have to, your energy, your instinctual energy has to be healed too. So a lot of people are having this issue to where I'm thinking positive and I'm going in the direction I want, but I'm still attracting things that I don't like, you know? Um, so then you will have to heal whatever karmic energy or trauma um, energy that is stuck in the cells of your body <laughs> that is not setting you free from certain experiences that are unpleasant for you. Okay. But yeah, a lot of times that Mars energy gets beat, beaten down for a lot of, I know in my childhood it was beaten down for me and it has taken me a lot of bravery and courage and fortitude and fights, which is all very Mars energy. I have Mars, um, in my, I have Mars rising, okay, but it's conjunct my 12th house. Um, so yes, Mars rules, also rules the rites of passages of development. So you have people who are late bloomers, you have people that bloom too fast, you know, and, and you have people who don't know what their rites of passages are and they have not been through them properly. So you might see, that's where you have um, people who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s still acting like teenagers because maybe in their childhood, they weren't allowed to go through certain rites of passages. You see it a lot in celebrities to where they've been working and being an adult, taking care of their family like their whole life. And then when they get into their 30s, they act like teenagers because they didn't get a chance to have that. All right. Uh, C H M. 
your energy useful for strategy six house oh okay um i talked about that oh mars can um be too assertive or too aggressive or you could be considered a troublemaker so a part of a part of life with mars working with mars energy is learning like timing because mars is about timing as well um sometimes when people ask me like they want to know immediate timing because you know you have like the outer planets which are the slow moving planets the transits that are going to take a while you know and those are major life changes a lot of times with those planets with the inner planets like Mars and Mercury and Venus, they move fast around the um, around the wheel, <laughs> and they um, can attribute to taking immediate action in certain areas at certain times. Or should I uh, buy this house? Or should I uh, date? Should I uh, move? You know. Um, you can look at the uh, Mars transits to see when to take action in certain areas. Should I go to school right now? You know, or when this year would be a good time for me to start doing certain things. You can look at uh, a Mars transit to see. Mars usually stays where it's at for like a couple of weeks, a few weeks. It doesn't stay long in one sign. All right. And then Venus stays for like a month. Um, okay, yeah, so we talked about the Adreno, fight or flight. It rules that. Um, we talked, well, we did, we kind of talked about the ancestors. Well, okay, so Mars with the ancestors. Sometimes your ancestors will rather you take action, even if everything isn't perfect, to, to uh, make a cause and effect. To cause things to happen at certain times that are supposed to happen. Um, Cause I have I have Mars in, in Virgo. My my ancestors and my guides are always like, come on, <laughs> time almost up for this certain thing to happen, and then they'll go fine. We'll give you extra time. Cause I think about things before I do them. I like I like for things to be neutral. I don't like drama, you know. <laughs> but sometimes the drama is necessary. It's like chemical re combustions and reactions and lessons that's that are supposed to be learned at certain times. Destiny, Mars, and destiny. Mm -hmm. All right. So, with Mars also, it's good to feed your passions or else you'll feel like you're not doing the right things or your energy will always feel like it's being drained. That can also you have be having adrenal fatigue as well because of your adrenaline's always running because of past trauma. But making sure you're feeding your passions, that's how you know everybody's not the same. Everybody's not supposed to look the same, do the same thing, like the same things. God dang. You know, it's like everybody is trying to live in their head um, so that they can be accepted instead of living in your body, you know, with your instincts. That's how you're going to have a fulfilling life. You can make, just like I was talking about in that hypergamy alpha male video I just made, um, you can make the right choices and choose like all the right perfect woman and all the right perfect man but be miserable because you're not listening to your your guttural instinct you know it's like sometimes who you like and who you love or and who likes and who loves you is it going to fit into what's on instagram you know or what someone tells you on on a um, a youtube video sometimes you legit have to go with who you are and how you feel. And that means you have to stop ignoring it. Okay? And so Mars likes to have energy. It likes to have passion. Um, it's not necessarily like the sun where it likes to have fun. But there are like uh, the debilitations. Like having Mars in a sixth house or having Mars in Virgo would be like less fun. 
for Mars energy. All right, so we're going to get started uh, very soon with Mars through the houses. I might go live sometimes, but if when I don't go live, it drains me less. <laughs> And I probably spend less time because I'm not like chit chatting and talking to people and stuff. And I can get through it faster because I want to I want to get through this and then do Venus and do Juno. And that way you can see if you're Mars and you're Venus, what you're um, attracted to. Because in, in these videos, since I already did kind of like this synopsis, I'm going to do it like this. Mars is... Um, what a woman is attracted to in a man. So I'm going to do it if you're dating a woman with Mars in the first house or in Aries. And then with Venus, I'm going to do if you're dating a man with Venus. Da, 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 da. And so then you can see if you're if what you're attracted to and then who you're supposed to marry, that's Juno, or who would be best for you to be in a committed relationship with is actually compatible. Hmm, that's interesting. Peace. I'll talk to you guys soon. Hello. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to look at my services on TheVeryGoodLife.com and also check out my podcast, The Trigger Happy Workbook, on Spotify and Anchor.fm. Peace to you.